winter has just begun and I finally decided to go outside and collect some of these beautiful autumn leaves but of course it's actually winter it's not autumn anymore so those magnificent leaves that had all those colors in it a little bit of green and yellow and purple and red they've all gone I'm <laughs> left with these brown leaves so I went searching out the front and hit upon this magnificent number and it has a turned over leaf. I love that opportunity to do something a bit interesting. It's got broken bits, odd bits, but most of all, I'm so excited that it has this amazing intense red and coupled with purple. So I'm gonna make that the colors that I use today, but I do need to offset it with something. So I'll probably be using some of this magnificent uh, raw sienna. It's kind of yellow, of course, and brown. I think together that will look fantastic. And that one's over there. One of the most wonderful things about using actual leaves in your paintings is that you can use them to create the composition. The other thing that's brilliant about having the leaves is that you can actually trace over them. Very tempting for me to put in a big wash in the background, but I will lose these pencil marks. I'm going to paint all of the leaf shapes with red. I'm gonna do one at a time, however. It's so tempting just to go in and paint them all. I'm gonna make my red much lighter, more water, much lighter. So here you can see the limitations of working in alizarin crimson. It's a stainer and I've done some um, what looks like outlining. I actually had water there and wherever the water finished and I put the, the alizarin crimson down, when it's hit the water, I've gotten a mark. This one uh, is much better in because I used a limited amount of water, so it's more controlled as a wash. It actually doesn't matter at all. I just thought it was interesting to point out um, as we go along. Here's my water brush. It's such a big brush, it just still it doesn't require re-dipping it's um got plenty of water on it and i'm now doing a much more controlled wash such an incredible difference this is permanent rose and it's such a pretty pinky color not near as staining as permanent alizarin and at about this point it begins turning inwards and oh look it turns in again there and then it comes down and that goes up and around. That bit is going to be preserved and it will look like that's the leaf being turned over. So what happens then is that the rest of the leaf is going to get some tone. This is raw sienna. So I'm gonna make up a lovely pale raw sienna. I might put in a little more water. And the only part that I'm not going to paint is going to be the part where the leaf is turned over. There. And I know it's turned over twice, so I'll have to deal with that later. Because you have to work so quickly when you're putting in a glaze of another color like this that I'm not gonna stop for the detail. I'm just gonna keep going and going 
until this area is beautifully covered. And on my palette, some of those colours are starting to mix and I don't mind at all. It'll just come up with something surprising and not a problem. So that will start to look like it's turned over. This is actually needs to have a little bit of colour. That same beautiful ready mix. So I'm just going to invent a little turnover there. So it goes off and down to there. The beauty of a brush like this when it's got a point is that you can do both thin lines and thick lines at the same time. All right, so for this one, since I've only got that little tiny turnover, I'm going to create a lovely internal vein. Probably could have done that on that one, couldn't I? And an internal vein over here, goes down to there. This is even slightly ideal for my hand. So I'm having to be very careful, but I'm bringing it down and then joining up that line. Bring it down, bring it down. Try not to have a whole stack of areas that are unjoined, just joining up the big swatches of wash that I'm putting on top. Some water and in the purple going right up to that pencil line and up to there and it goes into there give it an edge my goal is not to have that pink move too much so that I can glaze. And the idea of glazing is that you leave that bottom layer intact. And then you get this beautiful look as you build up colors on your page. Like that and goes to the tip. So I'm going to paint it like that and leave little bits of pink poking out and drop in purple on the edges and make it hit that water and not do much more than that okay a little bit thicker as i come down to the base a little bit darker i think will look good A little bit of water over here as gently as I can and straight in with the purple dark there a little bit of detail and get to the dark stuff there. Okay. as I come down and the final one water as gently as I can a bit of this purple And straight into the thick stuff that as I come to the base will get lovely and fat. And just grab some of that thick stuff for there. It is so tempting to want to do more than one at once. But it will just dry and then you'll have a half dry leaf and then you'll be trying to add the moisture, the wet paint, and it will drive you nuts. This is the thick purple. 
just feel like it wants a bit of impact. Oh, and that thick purple, I'm going to double down on this edge here. This edge there. Um, switch to my little tiny brush and just soften that out a little. and mineral violet which is quite wonderful because that's going to make this little leaf pop again and there But mostly I'm after that fabulous dark. How's that? Yeah, it's made it look quite different to the others and that's quite important. I'm going to go back to the mineral violet and just move it around. Kind of um, just blend the blue a little bit. Huh. Oh, isn't that cool? I was totally intending something completely different at the beginning of this painting and I've gone in quite a different way. This coming up here is looking very bad, so I'm going to add blue to it because it just needs to be adjusted a little bit there. That's a bit better and I'll put some over on this side. So what to do about the little pink dot? I can do more dots or I could try and erase it. So I think I'll try and erase it first. I've got a little tiny flat brush. It's called a quarter inch flat brush. Clean water and clean tissue. Remove excess moisture and see if I can scrub at it. The brush is way too soft. It's not going anywhere. Next thing to try is one of these magic erasers. <laughs> I reduced its impact a little bit and slightly damaged the page. So I'm going to stop playing with the dot. Who cares about the dot? So should my signature go here or here? I quite like the idea that it's definitely incorporated over there. I like to sign it at the time of painting because in my palette are all these fabulous colors. Here's this magnificent red, the uh, alizarin crimson. Marian Chapman, thank you so much for watching. It's wonderful that you would tune in and paint with me or learn something from me or uh, as long as you're enjoying it and as long as you're painting, it's so important to be painting. Thanks so much guys, see you next time, bye.